And action. All right, so welcome back uh, to the screenwriter program. I am Denzel, the program specialist of Suffolk County Girl Scouts. Um, so like I said today, we have the screenwriter program. Um, I'm gonna basically teach you guys the basis of starting a, writing a script, and then maybe you guys can get your parents and some of your family members to play your favorite actors that you would develop. Um, so before we even start getting into uh, the formatting of the script, I just want to give you some guys some tips beforehand. Um, you know, when you're developing your uh, your script, you want to make sure you have a theme and the overall purpose of the film. What do you try? What message are you trying to give with this theme? What are you trying to have the the viewer or your audience learn from watching your film? Um, another thing is it could be your angles and your character traits. Uh, let's say one of your anger, uh, your, your protagonist has an anger issue. You know, how do you portray that in his dialogue or in his actions or in his body language? That's another thing too that you kind of can use. Um, and then also uh, you want to make sure that your story has a beginning, a climax and an end. I'll get to that more in detail a little bit later, but just for um, beginning purposes, this is what you need to know. Also, what kind of film is it? Is it is it a drama? Is it a comedy? Is it a parody? Like, what what kind of film is it? That thing. These are questions you kind of want to check out before you even get to writing your script and planning it out. Um, so then you want to do your storyboard, your brainstorm. Um, you want to map out pretty much everything that happens in a series of events before you even start doing your dialogue. Um, and you want to think about your setting, when and where it takes place, because this can affect uh, the clothes that people, some of your characters wear. It could be affect the uh, accent that some of the characters talk in. You know, and this is something that you guys want to bring into uh, attention before you actually start writing. Um, so we're going to go into a little bit more basis after this. Stick around and we'll be writing a screen or a movie script together. Uh, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into some stuff you do before even writing your script. Um, like I said, choosing the, your idea or the element of your idea is very important. Um, you, you basically want to have get feedback from this idea so that way you're not spending too much time, maybe three, six months working on this script to then, you know, crumple it up and throw it in a wastebasket, you know. So you want to make sure you're getting feedback before you even start writing. Um, and you want to have your idea kind of in concrete. Um, another thing is try to be as original as possible. I know that is um, not an easy feat because so much has been done. But, you know, some people, what they try to do is take, try to be very personable with their writing. So they write about stuff that happened to them in their, in their life. So that way it makes it pretty personable and original but it's also relatable to people who have gone through something like that or know somebody who have gone through that so that's another tidbit to use um try to be original but yet personable as too um also like when when you're doing this you can make sure your dialogue is your your character is you're not writing out of you're writing out of emotion that's what you want to do you don't want to have your character you know if your character is upset you don't want to be like ah I'm upset. You know, you want him, you want the body language and you want um, the dialogue to kind of hint at this. So it's up for the audience's interpretation to see how this, how your main character is, is reacting. Um, also, like I said before, know your ending, right? Your whole, you have to have your whole story pretty much written out and thought about and your chain of events and series planned out before you even do that because you don't want to have to be start writing and you have no ending and it's like where are you taking us you know it's like getting on an airplane and you don't know where your your destination is you're just flying around you know so you you want to know where your destination is and where you're going to go because that can help you um get there at the end of the film uh all right um like i said before outline all your scenes a series of events um, so you're going to divide your, like I said before, the beginning, the climax and end with your film. You want to uh, divide it into three acts. So the first act is the setup. Um, this is basically introducing all the characters, 
um, introducing um, the little theme that's going on there. And then you, what you want to have in between Act 1 and 2 is a plot point. This is basically where it would flip whatever happened in Act 1 and now it creates a problem. So let's say, okay, we have our Act 1 is our introducing our main character. He's a he's a ninth grade kid, a ninth grader, you know. And um, you know, he's he's a he's a captain of a football team, he's all this, all that, and then our plot twist could be, oh, he's failing out of school, or you know, his girlfriend broke up with him. So now in act two, act two is basically the problem solving act. So now he has our main character would have to solve what happened in between the problem that came between act one and two would then be solved in act two. So then another plot point, plot twist happens between two and three. This is another problem once. So it's basically like a peak in value. So our, our introduction is the, is we're introducing the character. You're going, we're kind of on this steady incline. Then a plot point, plot point brings us down. And then act two, we're solving this plot point. So we're like, okay, we're back up. And then another plot point where we twist it again. So now it's down again. And then the third act, we're going to go back up. That is the um, the conclusion of everything. So that's when you pretty much want to wrap it all up and make sure that um, when you're ups and downs, you want to make sure you end on up. Or if you're going down, up, down, up, down, up, you want to make sure you end it properly. Um, so that's basically what you want to do. And uh, that's what you want to do beforehand. So now what we can do is we can talk about uh, how to write some of the things and what are what programs we can use to help when you're writing a movie script. Stay tuned. We'll talk about the formatting and how uh, each part is very important to the to the script. So it be, it breaks down into five different categories. Number one being your slug line or your um, scene heading. This is basically the location either inside or outside and uh, day or night. Um, these are always in caps and you want to show, um, you know, the, this is, this is, you want to make sure that it's easily displayed. So that's why we put it in caps so that we can always see it. We can always reference it when we're looking at our script. Um, an important thing is, let's say um, your scene, you're at the, you're at the same, there's two different scenes. But let's say, you know, you're at the mall in one scene and then second, the second scene, you're still at the mall. That would be, you would write continuous there. So it's the same scene, sharing the same scene. And let's say you, um, you know, it's a, you left and you came back to the same scene. So you would put later instead of continuous. And then another thing too is let's say if you're in a car, you would put moving. So if the dialogue's happening within a car, you would put moving. So that way, you know, people, we can, we can always um, add on to this by showing the visuals of a moving vehicle, you inside of a moving vehicle, you through a rear view mirror, you know, those kind of things add on to just based off your slug lines. Um, so your second part is your action of uh, description. So this is what is happening. What is happening in your script in this scene right now? Um, you want to write this always in the present tense. You don't want to say, I took off my glasses, you know, or that that's present tense, isn't it? All right, anyway, <laughs> uh, let's say, you know, um, you don't want to say, I will take out the garbage. That's a better example. Um, you know, you just want to say, will took out the garbage, you know. Uh, so that's something you want to do. You want to make sure you're writing in present tense because that's happening right now. Um, this is basically where you're going to introduce your, the character for the first time. You want to capitalize their name when you're, when you're introducing for the first time, Denzel capital. After that, you can, you know, you can do capital first initial and then the rest of the name lowercase, obviously. Um, and then here you want to also, uh, uh summarize your character just briefly. Basically you, you want to tell them, you know, kind of the appearance of it, you know, uh, uh, Denzel standing at a large stature, gently handsome, um, smooth and dashing as he records his video, something like that, you know. Um, and then 
Uh, you also want to, what I said before, you want, we want to write the character name all caps. You want to have it centered. Um, a couple po important things, let's say if you're starting a film, and let's say uh, I'm the main character in my film, and I'm not talking directly to the camera, but I'm still involved in the scene, that would be something called off screen. So you would write Denzel OF or OS, right? So that's um, that's that saying like if um, you see me washing the dishes and then I'm basically narrowing my own actions, that's, that's when you'd use that. Um, and then voiceover is if I'm not in the scene completely, let's say there's a dog, two dogs walking and I'm voicing over, you would put V.O. So that would indicate your voiceover or off screen if needed be. Um, and then the dialogue is the fourth part. So this is gonna be your center text. Um, you wanna center that. Uh, you wanna write within the character's accent and vocabulary, like I said before, your setting kind of um, would dictate this. If you're in the South, if you're in medieval times, if you're in New York and you know, you're in an Italian area, Little Italy, Maybe you might want to talk in an Italian accent, use the same words, those vocabulary, make it as real as possible. Um, and then you have the parentheticals. Parentheticals is a very important thing. This basically describes how your person's talking. Um, so you can say, uh, Denzel hesitantly explains how to create a video, you know, something like that. Or that way, your the, the parentheticals can also attach themselves to the body language of the character you know so if the character is upset he's talking with his hands that would be something that we would put in the parentheticals you know uh, uh anxious angry it's basically like i said describing the characters and what's going on with the scene um so another thing when you guys are using well when you guys are wanting to write a movie script there's a couple apps you guys can use that might help you guys out um i know there's rider duet that's one i use um it's pretty good it's free that's a good thing sometimes it's a little difficult with um the formatting um final draft is a great one this one you have to pay for it is pretty pretty good though it's pretty easy seamless um movie magic screenwriter also you have to pay for but when you have to pay for these things it's it's pretty much easy you can export it to whatever you want and it pretty much sets it up for you um and then you got another one it's uh cell s uh cltx.com that's another free one um you can use that i've tried that one out too i like more writer's duet for me personally but um all these are all uh you know most of them are free and and you have to pay for the other two but you know they're pretty they're pretty good for what you want to do um, and they will help you out because a lot of these times is that sometimes we don't know how to actually format it, you know, so we're think it's all out of order for us. So these kind of help us keep us on track and they'll tell us which one's what and you kind of just plug in and play with the uh, with the formatting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over an example to what how mine would look, how a scene for me would look, and then um, we'll take it from there. All right, hope you guys are getting some good tips and will uh, show me what you guys have written. So another tip um, when you're writing your screenplay is basically you want to make this, I don't want to say, uh, you want to make it almost as simple as possible or digest digestible as possible. So that way, let's say I wrote uh, a 12 page uh, script and I gave it to someone of uh, Steven Spielberg, for instance, and Steven Spielberg looked at it and he was like, all right, this is good. You want to make it so that whoever is reading it doesn't need you for clarification. So you want to make it as easy, as digestible, as, as legible as possible. And with your formatting, this will help you. But you want to make sure that they don't need you for any clarification. And then you can portray or they can portray the story exactly as you wrote it. You know, and this is why we, we have a heavy emphasis on the parentheticals because they describe everything and you setting your location because you don't want to write something and then have someone direct it. It's completely different than what you saw. So that's what we, we try to hone in and make it as, as, as acute as possible. So you set the location to what you want so that then when someone else is looking at it, someone's directing it or whatever, it's exactly your vision. Keep that in mind. Um, so as you see here, I went to writers, writersduet.com. Pretty easy. 
um, I signed up with my email was able to save on here um, you can export you can import it's pretty easy I like the way it works and you can um, it helps you with the formatting I'll show you after it kind of um, throws off the little orientation with me recording so I'm just gonna keep it off there to the side for now but yeah it look it shows all the, um, the slug line the action description all that stuff here so <clears throat> we're gonna start here with my first um, slug line or my scene heading and that is exterior so exterior or interior is basically where it is is it outside or is it inside so mine is outside South Beach Miami and it's at night so you always want to end with night or day and you always want to begin or with interior or exterior so let me just open that up again um, so then my description of the scene rainy gloomy day Denzel is heartbroken or gloomy night sorry Denzel is heartbroken roaming the streets with no destination in sight then we go to the character um, introduction Denzel in his half buttoned silk shirt drenched from the rain looking like he belongs in a romantic drama <laughs> then we have the parentheticals um, which are the description words for this sobbing slash crushed crushed so now we have the character and OF. OF, like I said before, is the off-screen um, dialogue. So basically, this would be um, a voiceover of the... So the actor is... He's speaking, but it's not dialogue. So how we uh, differentiate is if he... if the, like I said before, if the actor is part of the scene, and maybe let's say I'm running or washing the dishes, in this case I'm walking, and then this these lines come after, this is this is basically like I'm in my head thinking this, but I'm saying it out loud to the camera, but in this scene it's in his head, he's thinking this as he's walking, so he's not going to say anything for the camera, but you hear it even though he's walking, whereas if this was something else or someone else and I was saying something, it would be a voiceover because me, myself, or the character themselves is not in the actual scene. So that's the difference between voiceover and off off uh, off scene. Off screen, sorry. Alright, so aimlessly walking in the rough rough streets of South Beach. It's cold. I'm heartbroken. I don't know where I'm going, just aimlessly walking. And I have a half button silk shirt on, so I must be looking dressed to impressed. So, here we go. I did everything for that girl. Gave her the moon and every single star I could every star I could find. And all for what? I don't deserve this. So now, what this is, this is um another action description right here so he walks into the no no this is a transition this is a transition which is basically i am summing up a new action so now i'm no longer in the external this external scene of me in miami in the south beach at night now i'm still in miami but i'm in to, uh, tony's taco joint so i'm inside you see that interior night so now that you know We've gotten this. I walk into the taco joint. I'm the only, and he's the only customer. I keep saying he. We we share the name, but I am not the character. <laughs> All right. So now we got rid of that. So we can just minus that. So it's easier to read for me. So now interior Tony's taco joint night. Now we're going to describe the scene again. Super quiet. Denzel continues to share as his as he stares at his food. Now we're going to juice a new character, Talia, Tony's niece. Is cleaning up the countertop and noticed Denzel barely touched his food. Now here you go with another parenthetical here. Hesitant and concerned. Now Talia comes. Are you okay, sir? Is there something wrong with the food? And here Denzel is answering un in unconfidently. Unconfidently. No, no, it's fine. Talia is concerned yet disrespected are you sure you hardly touch your food 
you do know we have the best tacos in South Beach, right? Not being them would be like a slap in the face to my uncle. Denzel's being apologetic here. Let's just bring this up a little bit. Denzel's being a little apologetic here, so he's like, nah, I would never respect Tony. He knows I love his cooking. I've been coming here ever since I was a kid. Now, Talia is probing. So, what was the name of the girl who did this to you then? Now, Denzel's like, what? She's a mind reader. So, now he's confused. And he responds, how did you know it had to do with a girl? Jokingly, Talia. So, now here you can see it's just listing again where we're at. So this is just still the um, the location. She's uh, Talia is still cleaning, or or if she wasn't still cleaning, she's still at the countertop nonetheless. So now she's responding to Denzel in a joking manner. Child, please. I noticed as soon as you walked through the door, walked in the door. I mean, look at you. Your clothes are all soaked. You look like you lost your. You, you look like you lost your puppy. Not to mention, you're just staring at the best taco. In South Beach, best tacos. You're just, you're just staring at the best tacos in South Beach. Any man crazy enough to do that has to be in his feels. Now Denzel's intrigued. He's like, ha ha, so you're good at reading people, huh? And Talia goes, only the ones that catch my eye. Denzel responds, with, very surprisingly. Oh, really? I could dig that. Name's Denzel. And yours? Talia goes, Talia, and co-owner of Tony's Taco Joint. Denzel's impressed. He goes, excuse me. It's funny, because I've been coming here for a while, and I've never seen you. So now, he uh, Talia responds, maybe you just didn't notice. Denzel responds, I guess I didn't. Talia joins Denzel at the booth, and the two continue to talk. So this is just uh, another, it's not a transition. We're not going for one scene to another. Staying in the same scene. We're just moving, adding an action. So now she's moving from the countertop to the booth where Denzel's sitting. So now what happens is, um, like I said before, this is another uh, character narration, but I'm still in the scene here. No, Denzel's still in the scene here. So... He, so the two continue to talk. So they're talking in the booth, and you can't really hear what they're saying. But then Denzel comes over with this quote behind it. So you hear them talking, and then he, you see them talking, and then he comes in with this next line. Life is a beautiful thing. At, some, at times, it's a roller coaster for real. Through the ups and downs, you got to stay positive. Sometimes in life, when one door closes, another opens. Let's just hope whatever is behind door number two is better. And as you can see here, um, for me, sometimes I like to just make sure there's spaces in between um, so I know exactly what I'm reading. It's just a little bit for me. And as you see, like I said before, each page, it kind of just reminds you where we're at in the, in, in the script. So we're still here, um, and it gives you, it shows you more. So, um, some things here that's pretty interesting. Um, let's see if we can open them up. Uh, no. Uh, where was it? Was it here? Um, no. Tony's Taco Joint. Yes, here it is. So now, what you can do is, when you're when you're starting it out, let's say if you use this to your, um, this is the platform or format you want to use, you put the scene and it gives you, you hover over, it tells you the action, hovers over and tells you, and you can even add it in here. So let's say we wanted to make this a character, we would highlight it and then click character and it would just um, indent itself to where, to where this is. See, so you see how I highlighted that and character pops up. So then parenthetics, oops, character but you see how that switched over um another thing i didn't mention was transitions so i didn't mention it in here but i didn't mention it before when i was explaining to you guys um so this is a visual scene um you can cut to uh 
this is just um, this would be where would I do my transition? Here is my transition. Walks into the, to the taco joint and he's the only customer. So it would you could put cut to walking into the I like that actually cut to Denzel walks into the taco. So this this could probably and then another good thing too is it your shot. It could tell you the camera angle and the direction. So it could tell you where where exactly the shoot the shot is and what you know where exactly do you want to put it. So now I can put this depending on where where I want to um, have the camera focused. For instance, I can have it the camera shot from behind Denzel walking into the taco place, or it could be from inside the taco place. It could be from above the counter, like a camera. Who knows? But this is where you would want to. Um, show and, and showcase that and this is very important because if you lay this out and make it easy and digestible for everyone to then later on um, be able to portray it's easier for everybody because if you tell them if you write it how okay it needs to be front facing or side facing or whatever then the director or whoever bought the script is actually going to portray that and it's exactly how you envisioned so with that being said um, get your parents to read over it Get your parents to act out in as your actors um, while we are still quarantined. It'd be a beautiful thing to learn a new a new skill and a new art. And I think that we should also for your leaders and some of the volunteers that you care about. I think you should write them a little something like this, so that not only do I get get the satisfaction of you learning a new skill, but a new art form where you can, you know, you're showcasing them. So that's a beautiful thing, and I um, hope you guys are enjoying uh, the videos, and I hope you guys stay safe. Thank you.